questions that I'm often asked, do I need to use the GNS3 VM? Why can't I use a virtual box? Can I use a VMware Workstation Player rather than Workstation Pro? Can I use GNS3 with ESXi? Can I run GNS3 on the cloud? So let's answer some of those questions. Firstly, GNS3 consists of two main components. We have a graphical user interface, which you're seeing here, and then we have a server component. Now the server can either run on the local machine, or we can use the GNS3 VM, or we could use a remote server. GNS3 has a lot of flexibility. So let's look at some of the options. Firstly, do you need the GNS3 VM? The answer is no for certain implementations and certain devices. If you're running what's called a Dynamips router, such as a 3725, that router can run locally on the local server running within Windows or within Mac OS. In this example, I've got a Windows PC running GNS3 and on the right hand side here, you'll notice server summary only displays the local Windows PC. And that's because under GNS3 preferences, I only have a local server enabled. I don't have a remote server and I don't have the GNS3 VM enabled. When I drag this router to the workspace and start it up, that starts a Dynamips process on the local PC. So it's running directly within Windows on the local PC. I'm not running this device on the GNS3 VM or on a remote server or in the cloud. It's running locally on this Windows PC. However, back in this Mac OS implementation, this is an iOS V layer two switch. This device requires QMU to run, and there are issues running QMU on Windows or Mac OS. So in this example, that device is running on the GNS3 VM. In this example, I'm using a VMware Fusion on a Mac, the GNS3 GUI, is communicating with the GNS3 VM, which is running QMU and is hosting this iOS V layer two switch. So do you need the GNS3 VM? As often is the case in IT, the answer is it depends. If you're only gonna run Dynamips routers, such as 3725s or 7200s, you don't need to run the GNS3 VM. However, a lot of other appliances, especially those that you find in the GNS3 marketplace, require the GNS3 VM to run. So you would either run a local implementation of the GNS3 VM, like I'm doing here, so the GNS3 VM is running on my local Mac, or I would run the GNS3 VM on a remote server. That remote server could be VMware ESXi or packet.net if you want to use the cloud. So the GNS3 VM either runs locally on Windows or locally on your Mac, or you would host it in ESXi or in the cloud. Here's some information from the GNS3 documentation talking about complex topologies. When creating complex topologies on Windows or Mac OS, it's recommended that you use the GNS3 VM. Only use a local GNS3 installation when creating simple GNS3 topologies. So again, if all you're gonna do is create simple topologies using Dynamips routers, you can use the local server or local Dynamips process running directly on your Windows PC or your Mac. However, 
If you want to create complex topologies, such as this example here, it's recommended that you use the GNS3 VM. This is also true, once again, for a lot of appliances that you find in the GNS3 marketplace. Now you can also use ESXi, that is for advanced users only. So it's recommended that if you're new to GNS3 or new to virtualization technologies that you don't try and set up GNS3 on VMware ESXi. Rather use VMware Workstation, VMware Player, or VMware Fusion to start out. Also, don't try and run GNS3 in the cloud on package.net or other places unless you have a lot of experience. So rather start slowly and then as you get more confident and familiar with GNS3, you can run GNS3 on other platforms such as VMware ESXi and the cloud. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want to wish you all the very best.